you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button really does help this channel grow my audience grow. And I appreciate it more than, you know, also quick, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook of the Betfred Sportsbook app, bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here's the video that you came here for. With that said, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into the weekend games. And what I'm going to do to start, we're actually going to zip ahead past Saturday. We'll come back, I promise. But we got to start with that Sunday game. Two top 10 teams. The signature matchup in college football this weekend Number eight, Florida State. Number five, LSU. LSU, a two and a half point favorite in the Betfred Sportsbook. The over under set at 56 and a half. And when I look at this game, a couple things stand out. One, it's interesting kind of reading everybody's kind of preview stuff in the lead up to not only this game, but this season, because it feels like pretty much everybody that's in the business of making college football playoff picks, uh, pretty much everybody in that business either has LSU or Florida State in their college football playoff, but not both. And what that says to me, this is kind of that last iteration, old school college football, where if you win in week one, it's great. But if you lose in week one, your back is against the wall all year. That's going to change going forward with this 12-team playoff. But on Sunday night, we know what's at stake. In terms of the two teams, let me say this. Two super talented teams, and I think from the Florida State perspective, I, I I don't know that people fully appreciate what Mike Norvell has done now heading into year four. You look at this team, not a ton of weaknesses, not saying they're Georgia, not saying they're going to win a national championship, but you have a veteran experienced quarterback, a guy that last year threw for 24 touchdowns, rushed for another seven touchdowns, had almost 500 yards on the ground, 3,200 yards through the air. 24 touchdowns, five interceptions, passing. So he's kind of a mistake-free type guy. Uh, Florida State also returns its leading rusher in Trey Benson. It returns on top of all of that. Uh, I would argue one of the deepest and most talented receiver rooms in college football. Johnny Wilson is the name to know there. Keon Coleman, the transfer from Michigan State. And keep a name, Heike Williams, a five-star kid, who uh, it was a high school player a year ago. Beyond that, deep, experienced offensive line. They added a couple nice pieces through the portal as well. Most notably, Jeremiah Byers, a transfer from UTEP, very highly coveted. And then on the defensive side, number four ranked pass defense in college football last year brings back a lot. And of course, up front, Jared versus the name to know. He was a monster last year, 17 and a half tackles for loss. I've said it many times. He is a guy, he would have been a day one guy had he wanted to go to the NFL, decides to come back to college football last year, or college football this year, excuse me, to play one final year and really try to elevate Florida State. Now, in terms of LSU, it's pretty much the same. That frontline talent at LSU, it's as good as anybody's. Brian Kelly, in a short amount of time, has done a great job. Um, you know, Jaden Daniels is the name. Obviously, everybody knows Jaden Daniels. Uh, the wide receiver room, if you're looking for a strength of LSU, I think all those receivers are very good. Uh, Kyron Lacey's back. Malik Neighbors, the leading receiver, is back. Of course, uh, Mason Taylor, who became kind of a household name with the game-winning score against Alabama last year. Remember, last year, LSU also started two true freshmen at offensive tackle. Both those guys are back. And then up front, LSU, maybe not quite as deep as you need to be to win a national championship, but Makai Wingo, uh, Harold Perkins is a monster. And unfortunately, of course, Mason Smith, who is not going to play in this game because the NCAA is dumb. Let me be the millionth person to tell you he should not be suspended for this game. It's a disappointment. Um, and then in the back seven, you know, you have a combination of kind of a, a, a couple nice transfers. Uh, they, they did pick up a star linebacker out of uh, Oregon State. And so that was o Omar Spates, excuse me, from Oregon State. Uh, and then a bunch of guys in the secondary, Denver Harris, uh, Zy Alexander, Andre Sam is a guy that's really made a lot of news in fall camp. With that said, let's get into the preview. And what I would say is bluntly, um, 
the last part that I mentioned kind of is, to me, maybe the most interesting element of this game as well. You look at Florida State. I'm not saying they're a perfect football team. I don't see that super obvious weakness where if you look at LSU, two things stand out. One, the run defense was not very good last year. Now, again, Brian Kelly, I don't think people realized he inherited a bigger mess than people realized. But this was a group that ranked 62nd nationally and really kind of wore down end of the season. 274 yards allowed on the ground to Texas A&M. Remember, they lost to Texas A&M in the final game of the regular season. 255 yards allowed to Georgia in the SEC championship game. Now, I get that Georgia was the national champion, but you give up back-to-back 250-yard performances on the ground. That's not a good sign. And then that's secondary. Like I said, last year, they really had to backfill through the portal. Well, a lot of those guys graduated, and now you have to backfill again with Denver Harris, Andre Sam, Zai Alexander, et cetera. De- Denver Harris has kind of been in and out on, during fall camp. And bluntly, that is the concern for me coming into this game, is that I think when you look at Florida State, and I know they're, they play in the ACC, and they don't play anybody, and they play a bunch of Boston colleges and Syracuse and whatever, I think you can legitimately say two things about Florida State. Florida State will probably have the best offensive line that LSU will probably see until at least Alabama. Now, Alabama's been talking all offseason about how much more physical they're going to be. We'll see if that's the case. But Florida State has NFL bodies, day one bodies on that offensive line. And then two, that wide receiver room is huge. And that's the part that really concerns me, is you look at a rebuilt LSU defensive secondary. You look at the fact That, oh, by the way, like I said, a guy like Denver Harris has kind of been in and out during fall camp. I'd be a little bit worried if I was LSU going up against this specific wide receiver room. As I said, Johnny Wilson, leading returning receiver, six foot seven in terms of his size. That's a monster. 43 catches last year, five touchdowns. Keon Coleman, I was looking at some stuff from uh, Pro Football Focus on Thursday, on Wednesday, excuse me. He is a guy that people think can be a day one NFL guy. I know I keep saying day one, but I think those are the types of players that are going to be on the field in this game. Keon Coleman, 58 catches last year for Michigan State, seven touchdowns, 798 yards. So LSU struggled to stop the run. This is the best run game they'll probably see until at least November. They have a rebuilt secondary. But guess what? What did I just say? Biggest, most physical wide receiver group that they'll probably see all year long. As I said, Heike Williams, another kid, six foot three, six foot four, five star kid, highest ranked recruit that Florida State brought in this year. Then you look at it from the other side, and this is what stands out to me is that Florida State probably has the best secondary that LSU will see for a significant amount of time. And that's where the concern comes in is that you look at LSU, a little bit banged up in the running back room. That's okay. That's a place they have depth. But at the same time, keep in mind, LSU's strength is in the pass game with those big wide receivers, those star wide receivers, Malik Neighbors, Kyron Lacey, as I said, uh, Brian Thomas, and Mason Taylor, the tight end. Well, Florida State finished fourth nationally in pass defense last year. So you're talking about from the Florida State perspective, Your strengths are going against LSU's weaknesses on offense. And then on defense, your strengths are going up against LSU strengths. And so because of it, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I love LSU. I love Brian Kelly. I've said it a million times. When Brian Kelly was at Cincinnati, that was kind of overlapping with the time that I was at UConn. I have followed his career since the Cincinnati days. I love Brian Kelly. I always thought he was underrated at Notre Dame. But I still think he's got some work to do with this LSU roster. Remember, he was asked at SEC Media Days, how far are you from Georgia? He said, we're not there yet. He said, another class or two, we're going to get there. But this was a guy that inherited a program with 39 scholarship players when he took over. That is not a one and a half year rebuild. That is a two, you know, this is the first full off season he's coming off of. It's going to take a three, four-year process to build a roster that can compete with Georgia and Alabama. Now, again, if this was the 12-team playoff era, I would have them as a as one of the 12 teams that make it by the end of the year. But in a 14-playoff year playing this Florida State team, I don't like the matchup. 
And so, yes, I don't, I don't pick games. I, I don't pick, you know, winners in every single game. There's sometimes that I don't like a spread. I do like the spread in this Florida state game. I think the wrong team is favorite. I think Florida state wins. And this is my bold take for week one. I think Florida state wins convincingly. Final score, in my opinion, 35 to 21 Florida State wins. They have those big wide receivers that are going to give that LSU secondary fits. They have that big offensive line um, that is going to be the best one LSU sees probably until Alabama. I like Florida State to win this game outright as a slight underdog. 